used this program for a News 4 special report. Thanks for joining us for this News 4 special report. We're going to take you live right now to the Metro Nashville Coronavirus Task Force briefing. This is an update on how the city is dealing with the pandemic. Let's listen in right now. Services Bureau Director at the Metro Public Health Department and Mignon Francois, founder and CEO of the Cupcake Collection. Today's briefing also features a video recording featuring several Nashville residents, which will be shown after Dr. Dr. Hildreth concludes his remarks. Director Chief William Swan of the Office of Emergency Management and Nashville Fire Department and Dr. Michael Caldwell, Director of Public Health, are here to help answer your questions. We'll begin with Mayor John Cooper. Good morning, Nashville. Today, our health department reported 300 new confirmed cases of COVID-19. And in consultation with our public health experts, we have determined that the most prudent course for action for both the welfare of our residents and the continued recovery of our local economy is to remain in phase two of our roadmap for at least a few days longer while we await more data and we'll be examining it carefully. Two thirds of today's reported cases are from samples collected earlier in June due to a laboratory delay. But this latest uptick has still caused our overall 14 day case average to remain elevated. States nationwide are seeing a recent increase in cases. And here in Tennessee, the latest reports show that the rate of increase in the new coronavirus cases in our, in our state has reached 2.7%. Now adjusted for the laboratory delay, Nashville's increase is relatively milder at 1.45%. Now while our testing capacity is increasing, the rate of Davidson County residents who are testing positive remains virtually the same. While the coronavirus is still with us, our phased economic reopening strategy, public health orders, and your efforts are making a difference. Dr. Alish Jahangir will present more details about our COVID-19 metrics and response momentarily. Now, every COVID-19 related casualty is difficult to bear, but unlike many other states and municipalities at this time, Nashville's hospital capacity remains relatively adequate and we are still experiencing a relatively low number of fatalities since our area's first reported case in early March. Again, the majority of our public health metrics are satisfactory, including our testing capacity, the number of regular and ICU hospital beds, and our health department's contact tracing ability. We will continue to carefully monitor our COVID-19 data throughout phase two and we'll work with our public health experts to make adjustments to our roadmap as necessary. Today's elevated COVID-19 numbers have been caused by newly confirmed cases in neighborhoods from across Davidson County, not just in one area. But as I announced last week, the Metro Public Health Department has initiated a focused effort to address a concerning hotspot in confirmed cases in Southeast Nashville. One of our three community assessment centers is conveniently located on Murfreesboro Pike in Antioch, and we are working with community partners to increase education and outreach efforts to slow the spread of the disease in the area. Remember, the health and well being of every Davidson County resident is our priority. We are doing everything possible to keep Nashvilleans safe as our residents return to work, but we're counting on all of you to help protect our community. Please continue practicing safe social distancing, wear a face covering in public spaces, frequently wash your hands, and remember to call the Metro COVID-19 hotline at 615-862-7777 if you are exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19. Testing is a vital tool that will help us advance with our phased economic reopening strategy. And I urge everyone to visit one of our three community assessment centers to receive a free assessment and COVID-19 diagnostic test. I am grateful to all the frontline healthcare workers and the students from Meharry Medical College for staffing our assessment centers. And I can personally attest to their professionalism and dedication to public health. Now we are asking all business owners for their compliance with our public health orders. Appropriate enforcement measures will also be used 
to ensure the safety of our residents. Over the weekend, 14 bars and restaurants across Davidson County were issued citations for being out of compliance with Metro's public health orders and have been assigned court dates. Responsible business owners in Nashville's hospitality industry are operating in good faith and are asking for appropriate enforcement to apply to those establishments that aren't making the effort to protect their customers or staff. Remember, at the heart of our economic reopening is consumer confidence. Without it, we cannot maintain a sustained recovery or keep our residents working and our tourism industry running. Since the beginning of our enforcement policies in Nashville, our health department has worked hard to educate local business owners and employees on how to keep their workers and customers safe and abide by all health regulations. But as we prepare for phase three of the roadmap and with all the resources made available by the Metro Coronavirus Task Force, there is simply no excuse for being unaware of or out of compliance with our public health orders. We will continue to investigate all complaints involving businesses that are in violation of Metro's orders and will respond accordingly to protect our residents. No one should fear for their health when going to work or participating in our local economy. Nashville is an international tourist destination with both in for both individuals and families, and we have a global reputation for safety. And we will keep our city healthy and safe for everyone, residents and visitors alike. Now, last week, I pledged that Nashville would act on President Obama's challenge to address police use of force policies. In accordance with the review and engagement aspects of this commitment, I'm assembling a commission to review community experiences with police use of force and develop recommendations to improve use of force policies. As part of the pledge, the commission will then present draft recommendations to the public for feedback before sharing final recommendations with me, the Metro Council, the Community Oversight Board, and the Chief of Police. As part of this process, I've reached out to the Community Oversight Board to seek their independent review of the police department's use of force policies and compare these policies to national best practices. From my office, I've asked Eric Brown, Coordinator of Economic Opportunity and Empowerment and Youth Development, and John Button, Director of Policy and Community Safety, to support the work of the commission and to work with the COB in their review. And also in response to concerns expressed by thousands of Nashvillians about specific policing practices, I've directed MNPD to amend its policy manual to include an explicit ban on chokeholds and to strengthen and clarify our officers' duty to intervene if they observe any MNPD member engaged in an improper or unlawful act, including excessive force, abuses of process, abuses of authority, or violation of departmental policies. Now, today's announcement in no way precludes additional changes in the future. Rather, it reflects my commitment to move quickly to improve policies and procedures where there are immediate opportunities to do so. As I've said before, I'm committed to substantive actions that bring about lasting change for our black community. And let's continue to engage in a peaceful dialogue about what must be done to provide equal protection and justice for all Nashvillians. Now, today, June 15th is 615 Day, a day for Nashvillians to observe the achievements of our community and reflect on the work we must do as we look forward to the road ahead. This morning, I want to welcome Mignon Francois, founder and CEO of the Cupcake Collection. Her company has partnered with our Nashville Predators to observe 615 Day. And today, the Cupcake Collection will be giving away 500 free cupcakes, as well as Nashville Strong t-shirts and Predators masks by curbside pickup at their store in Germantown, located at 1213 6th Avenue North while supplies last. Please be sure to wear a face covering and keep yourself safe and all staff members safe. And it's a pleasure, as always, to welcome Dr. James Hildreth, President and CEO of Meharry Medical College, who has joined us this morning to offer his well-informed and timely commentary on COVID-19 and our citywide response to the disease. 
And as always, the COVID-19 Response Fund is available to those seeking direct financial food, mental health, and social service assistance at the Metro COVID-19 website. And now I'll turn it over to Dr. Alex Shahengir, Chair of the Metro Coronavirus Task Force. Thank you, Mary Cooper, and good morning, Nashville. Here's the latest on the coronavirus in Davidson County. We now have 7,173 confirmed cases. That's an increase of 300 cases in the last 24 hours. We had another lab delay in reporting the results to us, and this caused today's numbers to be increased by this big amount. As the mayor noted, of the 300 cases, 200 of them should have been reported to us over a week ago, given the date that the tests were conducted. I should emphasize that when the tests are analyzed by the data collection date, by the collection team, we evaluate the date of collection. And thus the 14 day rolling average has increased by 29 cases daily over the last two weeks. Of the confirmed cases, 1,604 cases are currently active in our city and 5,496 residents or 77 of all cases have been cleared and recovered. We have 80 residents who have died because of, the com because of confirmed coronavirus. This has been steady for the past five days. There are currently 113 individuals confirmed with COVID-19 admitted to our hospitals. Furthermore, Hospital capacity remains good with 29% of floor beds and 30% of ICU beds currently available. As the mayor mentioned, we have decided to remain in phase two of the reopening plan for Nashville. As I have said all along, we evaluate, evaluate multiple metrics and conditions as we determine how to respond to this virus. But we cannot ignore the rising 14 day daily average count without learning more about these new cases. This pause will allow our contact tracing team to investigate and analyze the new cases that were reported yesterday. This will determine if there are any new clusters or patterns in these new cases so that we could isolate them if needed and ensure the safety of our community. We are close to entering phase three. As I mentioned, our hospital capacity remains stable and our mortality rate is also stable. The percent of tests that are positive is at 9.7%, and this rate has been stable for almost eight weeks. This shows that we do have adequate testing in our city. In fact, just last week, 8,190 Nashvillians received tests for COVID-19. And so this pumping of the brakes, if you will, will allow us to better be prepared as we enter phase three. Recently, we have seen other cities around the nation moving back to more restrictive guidelines because of the spike in new cases. Right now, we don't need to do that here in Nashville. And this pause will help us to move forward at the right time and not have to move backwards. On Thursday, Mayor Cooper directed the Metropolitan Public Health Department to further concentrate on the southeast part of the city to try to isolate this virus and help reduce the spread in this area. Our previous efforts have shown to have a positive impact, but there's more that we need to do to protect our residents in these communities. So here's our plan of action. We will do more community outreach and partnerships through local media, religious leaders, and community-based organizations. This week, the Metro Public Health Department has hired an individual who is, who is a dedicated staff member that will focus on our vulnerable populations. This is a new position and will be filled by someone with a strong connection within the community so that they can hit the ground running and address the challenges of these communities. We will also increase our communication and information sharing to this area through traditional and social media and community outreach. We will also increase testing in Southeast Nashville. We will have a more targeted testing in the community where we see clusters of positive cases. Now, this is in addition to the already placed Community Assessment Center in Antioch, as well as our mobile team that has been active in that area. We are also working with community-based organizations to support those residents who may have food, who may face food or housing insecurities due to the virus. The Metro Public Health Department is finalizing a plan with Salome. 
This pilot program will provide security for those residents who test positive and need to be quarantined, but may face hardships if they cannot continue to work. Now, while we spotlight specific areas of our city, we want to continue to focus on slowing the spread of this virus all over Nashville. So as always, we have three community assessment centers and our assessment hotlines open today. The centers are open from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday through Friday, and our hotline is open seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can call 615-862-7777 every day to speak with a medical professional. Please call our hotline or go to one of our assessment centers if you think you have the virus if you're worried about the virus at all, or if you've been exposed to someone who has the virus. Now, one final thing. A lot of people think and act like this thing is over. I want to be very, very clear. It is not. Being lackluster regarding all the precautions or thinking that we've blown this virus out of proportion will not help the cause. Look at the facts. The numbers of cases are going up in our state and in our country. You may not think that COVID-19 is a problem because it has not affected you. Once it is a problem for you or someone in your family gets really sick and dies, then it's too late. That's why it's important for you to follow the precautions and do your part. Thank you to all of Nashvilleians who are keeping safe and keeping your friends and neighbors in, in your mind and how you act. We need the rest of Nashville to join the team. We truly are all in this together and it will be working together that will help us defeat this virus. I appreciate your attention and I now would like to introduce Mr. Hugh Atkins. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jahanger. I'm going to talk uh, a bit about the compliance and enforcement component of the reopening phases. Uh, to date, the Metro Public Health Department has responded to more than 500 complaints and questions uh, since entering phase two. And as Mayor Cooper pointed out, by now, uh, there really isn't any excuse for anyone not knowing what the requirements of the reopening are. Uh, we still take the first step when we receive a complaint on a business to reach out to that business by telephone, let them know we've had a complaint, and make sure they are aware of the requirements of the public health orders, send them copies of the current orders, and then explain that if we receive a subsequent call and complaint on their establishment, that will generate a visit to their site. And if during that site visit, we find them out of compliance, we can issue a citation. We also offer to conduct walkthroughs in any business that has uh, questions or concerns about their particular establishment and how the orders apply to them. Most of these activities have resulted in the vast majority of businesses being responsible and being in compliance with the orders. But just in the past few days, we have issued 14 citations to different businesses across Davidson County. And these were issued, as I said, after field staff visited the establishments and documented that they were out of compliance. We went over the uh, violations and how the business could uh, achieve compliance. Each citation will result in a court, of court appearance for that business. And once we present our findings at those court appearances, a judge will uh, set the amount of any fines that are levied. If an establishment continues to remain out of compliance after we cite them, then we'll take the next step and the Department of Health will work with Metro's law department and the DA's office if necessary to take stronger measures, which could include closure of the establishment for some time. COVID-19 cases and deaths continue and we need everyone's help to take measures to stop the spread of this illness. We believe these public health emergency orders 
provide the appropriate and best requirements to reduce the spread of the illness. And as Dr. Hildreth has pointed out on many occasions here, if we need to be responsible citizens. If we go into a business that is not following these requirements, we, can't, we can walk out. Also, if you go into a, a business and they are allowing seating at the bar uh, or you think you want to eat at the bar, you need to choose to eat at a table. Um, we're in a pandemic and I don't think it's too much to ask to have your drink and meal delivered to a table rather than eat it at the bar. Uh, it's not too much to ask to say stay off the dance floor. We can do our part to help these businesses be in compliance. Another thing, these, we're all wanting to move to phase three. We've got to keep our numbers in phase two low. We have the vast majority of our businesses following these requirements to get us there. And the businesses that are not following these requirements are holding back their business partners that can't open till phase three. And we need to stop that now and get to phase three. So let's all be in this together as the mayor, Dr. Jahanger and Dr. Hildreth remind us every time we're here, we've got to work together, the businesses, and we have to take personal responsibility as citizens before we're gonna move forward. And with that, I will turn it over to Dr. James Hildreth, President and CEO of Meharry Medical College. Good morning, Nashville. No doubt many of you have seen and heard news reports regarding the surge in COVID-19 cases in many states around the country. In some states, hospitalizations have risen sharply in some, in some of those states to the highest numbers so far. Hospitalizations are perhaps the most important barometer of how well we're doing to contain the virus because hospitalizations are independent of testing. When a person is COVID-19 infected and they develop symptoms, they will more than likely be hospitalized. So whether they're tested or not, uh, this is the best indicator we have that things are not going the way we'd like them to. The bottom line is this, the virus is not under control in our country and the facts are the facts, and it's not. Reopening the economy, large gatherings on Memorial Day weekend, and large rallies and marches no doubt have contributed to this. The virus is still a significant challenge. As we began to patronize businesses, restaurants, and other venues, if we don't want to find ourselves, our city, and our state showing those same surges in COVID-19 cases, we need to continue to take the steps necessary to control the virus. We all know what those are now. Washing hands frequently, wearing a face covering when we're out, and staying six feet apart. Some local businesses have done an excellent job in transforming their operations to maximize safety of their employees and to keep uh, uh, customers safe. We as customers who patronize those businesses can drive the changes needed to keep the economy moving. If you walk into a business and you don't see the appropriate steps being taken to protect the employees and you, turn around and walk out. They'll get the message and changes will come. So businesses have a, have a right to operate. We have a right to not patronize those businesses that don't take the virus seriously. One of the most challenging aspects of all of this has been the cancellation of visits to people who are nursing homes by friends and families. This necessary public health policy has taken a, a huge emotional toll on the families of those, in, those individuals and the individuals themselves. Governor Lee has announced that starting today, visitations to nursing homes can start again. There are a few things to keep in mind to keep the residents safe and keep yourself safe. The first thing is, if you're gonna go visit someone in a nursing home, get a COVID-19 test and confirm that you're negative for the virus. You don't wanna be a vector introducing the virus into the facility, and you certainly don't want to be responsible for getting people there infected uh, and possibly causing severe disease. You should wear a mask and the person you're visiting should wear a mask. If at all possible, do the visit outside where the chances of transmission are lower. And if you can't do that, do the visit in a large room where social distancing is possible. And by all means, keep the number of people visiting to a minimum. Wash your hands or use hand sanitizers before you go and after you leave the facility. Around the country, tensions are high 
emotions are running high, and people have become very impatient and angry over the steps needed to keep all of us safe. Some view this as an infringement on their rights and a necessary disruption of life as we know it. In many places, public health officials have quit out of frustration or exhaustion. In other places, they've been fired for doing their job. And their job requires making recommendations that are at odds with life, normal life as we know it. In every city, county, and state, public health officials are driven by a single purpose, to keep us healthy and keep us alive. They surely should not be vilified for that. We need them, all of them, if we're going to navigate the pandemic uh, successfully. I just want to remind us that we're dealing with an extraordinary challenge that demands an extraordinary response. After all, we've not dealt with something like this for over 100 years. Responding to the pandemic has not been easy for any of us. Not for governors and mayors who have to balance physical health and economic health of their communities. Not for scientists and physicians working around the clock to find answers. Not for children and students unable to play and learn together. And certainly not for public health officials who have to make these hard recommendations that turn life upside down. When we are navigating unknown waters, like we are now dealing with the pandemic, we need one very important thing, and that's a fixed point of reference. In the case of the pandemic, the fixed point of reference is this. All of us are in this together. The virus connects us all, whether we acknowledge it or not. You may get infected and not get sick, but you may pass the virus on to someone who will, and that person can pass it on to others, including me. And I don't want to get sick. The point is the virus connects us all, and that is our fixed point of reference that we're all in this together. So Nashville, we got this, and there's one thing in particular we need to do above everything else. We're gonna keep the economy moving. Wearing face coverings. Wearing a face covering prevents you from giving the virus to someone else if you don't know you have it, and prevents you from getting the virus to someone who does if you don't. So. Please help us all. If you can't do anything else, please do that one thing. Wear a face covering when you're out and about. And that would help to, to flatten the trajectory of this problem. Nashville, we got this. Please do not become a vector for this virus. And we can get through this together. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hildreth. And now a brief video featuring you, the residents of Nashville and Davidson County, in observance of 615 Day, which will be followed by Mignon Francois, founder and CEO of the Cupcake Collection. Today, June 15th, is 615 Day, a day on which we as Nashvillians can reflect on the challenges we've overcome as a city and find hope for the work we must continue to do with solidarity generosity, and the strength of a community coming together as one, we've overcome a time of historic challenge. We've also adopted to the era of the coronavirus and committed to ensuring the health and well-being of everyone in Davidson County, while also working to safely and deliberately restart our local economy. Our community has spoken out against the truth of systemic racism against black Nashvillians. And we have committed to working towards real lasting change for all Nashvillians, towards a more just future for our communities of color. Though we've faced turbulent times, the spirit of Nashville has remained the same. Neighbors helping neighbors, an enduring belief in brighter days ahead, and a tireless pursuit for truth and for justice and for doing what is right for all Nashvillians. Ultimately, the strength of our community lies in every single individual who calls our city home. And on this day, we share what our cherished city means to each of us. To me, Nashville means progression. Hopeful. Family. Strong. Home. United. Friendship. Courageous. Hopeful. Committed. Evolving. Colorful. Home. Diversity. Girl power. Active. Inspiring. 
Unity. Vibrant. Determined. Strong. Supportive. Opportunity. Community. Resilient city. Hope. The kind of hope that is defined by the sheer strength of our common desire to weather any storm and overcome any challenge together. When you're hit with a tornado, you quickly realize that whatever is going on in your neighbor's backyard is your business too. Finding that the destruction of what was the life they struggled to maintain is now the very thing that has destroyed what you worked to build. It's more apparent as his roof has crashed into your garage. When a pandemic strikes, an entire community puts on masks at the notion of the CDC who explains the reason we wear masks is to care not for ourselves, but for, to care for our neighbors. And likewise, when there is an awakening in our nation's consciousness around issues of racial injustice and systemic problems that have always been, I'm reminded of the biblical parable of the Good Samaritan in which Jesus asks, which man was a good neighbor? It calls us to realize that the way we've done things in the past cannot be the way we do things in the future. At the Cupcake Collection, we take great pride in being a lighthouse in our community and to sprinkle joy to those who experience our brand. 615 Day offers a wonderful opportunity to do just that. We are grateful to the mayor's office and the Nashville Predators who stand with us to partner in that pursuit. Join us today in historic Germantown for Nashville Strong t-shirts, masks, and of course, we will have cupcakes. Using our curbside option as we keep our lobbies closed during this critical time at 1213 6th Avenue North. In the words of Fred Rogers, we live in a world in which we need to share responsibility. It's easy to say, it's not my child, not my community, not my world, not my problem. Then there are those who see the need and respond. I consider those people my heroes. Over the past several weeks, we've been encouraged, even tasked, to drive out darkness with light. And so it is that I stand here today because of the community that has made a world of difference to me and my family. I heard Neil McCormick once say that Nashville is not a place, it's a time. Never again will this set of people be in this place at this same time, creating what it has to offer. It is in the collaboration of this that we put the it in city, shaping for it what it can be, not just for some, but for everyone. Thank you, Ms. Francois. We'll now begin taking media questions. We'll start with Ian Jong at the Tennessean. Ian. Good morning. Uh, could we get some more context in regards to the delayed results? Is this the same lab that had the late results earlier this month? Are these results from a Metro assessment site? And what can Metro do and what will you do in order to address this in the future so that the city can have the most accurate and timely data when making health and policy decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Dr. John Gere. Thank you for the question. So first of all, yes, it was the same lab. Um, and listen, I, I found this out around four o'clock yesterday afternoon. And it, it, it's, it, it really frustrated me and infuriated me. Um, Metro, it's a private lab, sorry. So Metro doesn't, doesn't control lab, but we, we, commu we have communicated with them. We will continue communicating with this morning. One of my colleagues is, has a call scheduled and sometime in this morning to talk to him and we'll get more information. But, but I, I want them, if they're listening to me, it's not acceptable for me that, that we've had three times in a month where a lab has, has, has de delayed the results in the manner in which it has been. Now, with that said, when it comes to your question about does it impact how we make policy? Um, 
one of the nuances of when we report numbers to you um, on our graphs, on our websites, or, or when I say our rolling average is this much versus this much, is we reported on the day the test was collected. So when I tell you our 14-day rolling average is um, 126 today, it is those labs, now that we have the dates, are literally placed in um, the date that the lab was, the, the drawing, the lab was drawn, excuse me. So we don't, we're not, so I think our epidemiologic curves are, are factually accurate, are timely. I don't think policy is impacted per se um, with this because, because we are doing a rolling average with those numbers put into the appropriate time when the test was collected. And that's what we've done consistently in the three months we were important data. But it's frustrating. Um, I, I'm not going to disagree with you. Um, but I feel, again, that, that the way we've analyzed the data has allowed us to make um, to take these types of scenarios in consideration, and that's why we've always reported by date of collection. So thank you. Julia Palazzo at WKRN, you're on the air. Good morning, thank you so much. Mayor Cooper, bar owners on Lower Broadway called the citations over the weekend a double standard because of the protests and quote, selective enforcement. What's your reaction to that statement? And also, Dr. Caldwell, I'd like to get your response to that as well. And another question for you, Dr. Caldwell, images of all the crowds we've been seeing, do you think a large percentage might be tourists and people from out of town? And if so, how does the public health department and how should businesses help educate people that are from out of town that might not know what our policies are or what phase we're in? Thank you. Thank you, Julia. We'll start with Mayor Cooper. Well, uh, thank you, Julia, for the question. Um, every, everybody needs to be wearing a mask and observing social distancing, whether you're outside at a First Amendment protected assembly or whether you're, you're inside in a bar. And if you're inside, uh, the risk is greater, of course, than outside as public health policy would show. Everybody needs to be doing this. Um, for a private business to not comply when the rest of the industry is complying is unfair to the other hospitality establishments. And I think those businesses have every right also to point that out, that so many businesses in Nashville are working very hard to do this. As Dr. Hildreth points out, it, it, there's an individual responsibility for the people to comply, but also you as a consumer to um, keep each other safe, keep yourself safe, and, and have your business go where people are valuing your safety. But the other hospitality operators who are working so hard, I want to thank them. Boy, they, they are doing a great job. It's not easy either and it's unfair for them to people selectively to think the law doesn't apply to them and we're not of course anytime somebody thinks the law is not applying to them um, there's going to be a difficulty but again uh, if i can encourage with today's news the emphasis is we all need to be wearing masks when we're certainly in public um, businesses and indoors and um, let's not kid ourselves. Uh, you, you know when there's a clear and flagrant violation that's not constitutionally protected. You know, I mean, you could put tables on dance areas. You can communicate by your business how to keep people safe. Most people are doing that. Um, and the people who are doing it have every reason to point out the people in their industry who are, who are not doing it. Thank you. Good morning. Operating a business in Nashville Davidson County is a right. It's not a privilege. Let me say that again. Operating a business in Nashville Davidson County is a privilege. It's not a right. It's a right, a constitutional right, to have your First Amendment's rights to express yourself. And let me tell you that the people who are out there, and I was out there also, they are wearing facial coverings. I am working with the Office of Emergency Management to assure that they are wearing facial coverings, and they are. For the businesses, 
let me say, I'm disappointed. Those who are not complying, you know better. I've been there. We've done everything to help you to comply, and we will continue to help you to comply. Most are complying, so thank you. But what I'm most worried about are the people who work for you. When you don't have your customers wear facial coverings, you are putting your employees at risk. Now, people who go into facilities, when they wear a facial covering, I, I'm grateful to them. They are showing respect to the employees. When the employees wear facial coverings, they are showing respect to your customers. So I would say this. We've had uh, a time where we were safer at home and then you had the privilege to reopen again. Please respect that privilege and make sure you follow the guidelines. You know what they are. I have gone out there and have specifically educated you about it. You assured me that you would follow the guidelines and we expect you to. So please do that. Now, the tourists, of course, uh, they may come from other places, uh, but when they see that in Nashville, Davidson County, that we assure that employees wear facial coverings, we're doing something special here that many other places aren't. We're an example, and we would like everyone else to adopt that example. We will continue to hand out facial coverings as we can, and we look forward to everyone helping us get to phase three. Because if we do not do better, we're not going to get there. Harriet Wallace at Fox 17. Harriet. Yes, good morning. A couple of questions uh, for Mayor Cooper. And then I've got one for the doctors there from the health board. Mayor Cooper, my first question to you, I, I shared on Twitter um, the task information about the task force that you're putting together for police reforms. Oversight now is saying, why duplicate and delay efforts when you've already got the community oversight board? I'd like you to address that criticism. Why not just go to them? And they've already shared some reforms that they would like to see in place. Secondly, there are several who have spoken to me and said that they have heard promises of review and reform over the years but no mayor has held Chief Anderson accountable for enforcing the reforms and issuing any consequences. What will be different this time? My next question is for uh, Dr. Jahan here or Dr. Caldwell. Is there any chance that we could, or in the foreseeable future, revert back to phase one as we see these numbers climb and possibly even more with so many people who have been out? Thank you. Thank you, Harriet. I'll start with Mayor Cooper. Um, thank you, Harriet. Well, I guarantee accountability. I don't think that's going to be uh, an issue. Uh, today's announcement on chokeholds, I think, is important to um, go ahead and establish a new standard for practice and adjustment, uh, justice. I'm excited about the COB, um, the 21st Century Policing Obama Task Force pledge has laid out a process that we are following, and that includes the COB being presented the findings as well as the council and the chief of police. So the COB is fundamental uh, in helping the city establish the right standards, the right reforms, and then um, it's going to be effective and it's going to be the community brought together to agree on how we can be an example for best practices in Nashville. Harry, thank you for the question. Um, so your question is, is there ever a scenario in which we could roll back to phase one? And, and I guess the short answer to that is, of course, there could be. Right? I think you look at places like Montgomery right now, Alabama doesn't have ICU beds. Um, I think Houston is starting to have some hospital capacity issues. Start a lot, if you start having a lot of people, um, high mort mortality rate. Those are all things that potentially could push one back. But I think what I want to highlight is the way we have approached this as a city 
um, instilling safer home, being the first in the, in the Southeast to do so. And then subsequently being very thoughtful about how we've expanded and really following the data and, and really, as I've said a few times now, push the brakes before we roll into phase three, is we're doing everything we can to try to minimize having to do that. Because we know how hard it is to be back in phase one. And so we are being very thoughtful about how we're moving forward. Um, and, and so I don't see, foresee that right now, given our current situation. I'm, I'm very, I know it's frustrating to some that we're, that we've slowed to how we've progressed through the phases, but my gosh, it's, we're doing what we've done has allowed us to stay where we are. And, and so I don't see that happening right now, but I never say never. And, and I use those examples of two cities that, that are starting to see issues and, and we're trying to avoid that. Um, but right now hospital capacity for us is great. Mortality rate is low, hospitalizations are low. Public health capacity to do contact tracing is really good. And um, testing, I mean, we tested 8,100 people this week. Um, I mean, that is, that is a number. Our goal was 4,600. I was so excited when we hit the 5,000 mark and now we're testing seven to 8,000 a week in our city. So we're in a much better place and we continue to be in a great place. So I hope um, we don't ever revert, but never say never, I guess. Thank you. Jeremy Finley with WSMV. Jeremy, you're on the air. Uh, good morning. Thanks for taking our questions as always. I have uh, questions for the mayor as well as the health department. Mayor, I wanted to ask, are you aware of any use of force violations within the police department? And I don't know if you have any evidence at all that has been presented to you that minorities have at all been treated differently in use of force situations by Metro Police. And for the health department, um, I wanted to ask if you are directing employees to monitor social media accounts um, and how much uh, monitoring of social media you're doing to look for violations. And also, we found businesses within the complaints um, that have received more than one complaint but were not cited. So I wanted to ask if the health department feels like that they've been given too much leeway since phase two began and if you have enough staff to quickly respond to complaints, meaning by the time you get there, perhaps they've, they've, they've not, uh, they've changed their methods or, or what have you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Mayor Cooper. Um, thank you, Jeremy. I'm not aware of a kind of current use of force violation. Um, I will say that Comprehensive Driving While Black report is still something that weighs heavily on the community and that itself reveals that we have some challenges. And we're accepting that challenge uh, and we're um, going ahead. We're gonna understand that there has been a systemic racism in Nashville and in practices in the past and our job is to get beyond that while keeping our community safe to uphold our community's values. I'll answer the first half and then Mr. Atkins will answer the second half of your question. Uh, what we don't um, monitor social media directly and that we do uh, add those uh, to those facilities that uh, are, get put on our radar and Mr. Atkins will follow. Yes, as far as um, the duplicate uh, complaints that might be on the list that we provided, uh, we do get uh, lots of complaints that are duplicates that come in through the hub. And we try to evaluate with the amount of people that we have uh, reaching out to these people, whether those are the same complaint uh, that we are addressing with a similar call. So if it's the same complaint and we counseled them on that and we got the same, you know, multiple inst instances of that same complaint, say on the same day or maybe even the next day, we are considering that one complaint. And then if we get another complaint, we are following up on it with a site visit. Another thing to keep in mind is that we are in phases. And as these phases move along, the orders change. So what may have been a violation under phase one, say too many musicians on the stage, is not a violation in amended order six, where they expanded that. 
So some of the complaints may not be valid the second time they come in. So we evaluate them all. And when we feel like they have reached the point that they understand that there is a valid complaint on an establishment that generates them being put on the list for a site visit. Thank you. Our last question today is from Dennis Ferrier at Fox 17. Good morning, thank you very much. Both my questions are for the mayor. One is uh, critics of the Metro budgetary process have said that until there is something done about the post-employment benefits, the Metro will never have an answer to its shortfalls. And uh, of course at $4 billion outstanding, I'm gonna ask the mayor if there is any plan ever to really try to do something or deal with the post-employment benefits uh, deficit. And then my second question is, although the tax rate in Nashville is low, the tax burden is the highest of the five counties per person. Only Williamson County has a higher tax burden per person in the state of Tennessee. So is Nashville truly a, a low tax county considering that statistic? Thank you so much. Mayor Cooper. Um, thank you, Dennis, for that question. It's kind of a relief to get back to technical financial questions about Nashville. Um, the OPEB or the city's post-employment benefit number, um, of course, has been hidden, disguised, and disregarded by essentially every city in the country. We should not do that uh, in Nashville. It is not addressed in this budget, um, let us be clear. Of course, it needs to be addressed, but that is a generational problem. The $4 billion cumulative liability has been created over many years and it's going to take many years to fix it. Um, in the middle of the current pandemic, fixing it is going to be a bridge too far, but it needs to stay on the city's agenda and we need to, in time, come up with a comprehensive fix. The sooner we do it, the better it will be, such as Social Security. If there had been reforms enacted years ago, we would not probably be running into the problems of five years ahead. Now, your question about tax burden uh, and tax rate, um, let's, let's be clear, our tax rate is the lowest uh, and favorable even in the region. So in Tennessee, to many people, is viewed as the lowest tax state and Nashville is the lowest tax rate city. Your tax burden question seems to indicate something as to do about value of gross amount of taxes. Well, cities control the tax rate. We are pleased if the property value appreciates so much that all of a sudden your million dollar house pays more in taxes, but let's appreciate that that's an increase in value. That's a condition that we're actually trying to promote the increase in people's property values. And that's why keeping the tax rate low here, which we are compared to every other large city in Tennessee, is an appropriate thing to be super aware of. Financial matters are easy for misunderstanding. And again, objection to the tax rate increase, I get that's a legitimate concern always. But the tax burden is a little bit, I think, uh, analysis is a little bit of uh, not appreciating that that's because your values have increased. And we should be celebrating that, not complaining about it necessarily, because it means you've done well. We don't want to be a city where tax values go down and income goes down. The Detroits of the world suffered from that, and then they've had to increase the tax rate and got in a terrible spiral. We want sound financial management to preserve what we historically have had in Nashville, which is the lowest tax rate. I'd like to thank Dr. Hildreth, Mr. Atkins, and Ms. Francois for joining us this morning. All right, you have been listening to Mayor Cooper and other Metro officials right there for this. And one of the key things coming out of this is that chokeholds are now explicitly prohibited 
This is per Metro Nashville Police Department policy now. So that was just announced a little earlier if you missed the first part of that. And that was coming from Mayor Cooper talking about forming this commission, looking at community experiences with police use of force. But again, explicit ban now on chokeholds. And he says this announcement shows he will move quickly to improve policies, talking about bringing lasting change for our black community to have equal protection. Um, also, determining that if you missed the very beginning of this, we will remain in phase two at least for a couple more days. Uh, one of the biggest concerns is this drastic increase in numbers. Of course, they're saying it's because of a lab. Apparently, this is the third time in one month that this one certain lab has delayed in getting those results and those numbers of confirmed cases to Metro Public Health Department. And with that, that has got this drastic increase with just in a matter of the last two days. So they're talking right now about an increase of uh, so much that they thought this really leaves our 14 day average high a bit. So we're going to continue to follow this and bring you the very latest information. Also talking about today being 615 day here in Nashville. We'll have much more. We'll be breaking this all down for you coming up on News 4 at noon. We'll also have more online at WSMV.com and on our News 4 app. Just search WSMV. I hope you'll join me at noon. Thanks for watching. We now return to regular programming. Get more updates at WSMV.com and on the WSMV app.